Y'all know that I am obsessed with enamel pins. In fact, I have a wall dedicated to enamel pins that has over 500 different ones. I know, it sounds like a lot. It is a lot. That wall is very heavy. So back when Figpin announced that they would be doing a Sailor Moon collaboration, I was extremely excited because this was the exact type of thing that I just love to collect. And to have licensed enamel pins that look good was something that I was very interested in. So for this video, I do wanna thank Fig Pin for sending out several of these different Fig Pins. Some of these I purchased, some of them were sent out via PR. But I do officially have every single Fig Pin of Sailor Moon that has come out so far as of June 2024. Let's take a look at all of the Fig Pins that have come out so far. So let's go ahead and get started. So some of the earliest Fig Pins that were announced from the company included a few of Sailor Moon as well as the Inner Sailor Guardians. Many of these have a number at the bottom, which is not their LE status. This is not how many pins were made. This is just the number for the collectible. So in terms of some of the the earlier ones, we have Sailor Moon at 865. We also have Sailor Mercury, who was 866. Sailor Mars is 867. Sailor Jupiter is 868. And Sailor Venus is 869. In my case, these were sent over via fig pin. So they came with the artist proof sticker, which tells you that these are some of the highest quality pins that they had come out with. In terms of fantasy pins, that would be like the A grade or the pre-sale grade version of these pins with the least flaws. Each of these earlier pins had some really cute backgrounds, so they honestly look excellent if you just leave them in the box. Now they do come with a plastic covering, which you can remove, but you would be removing the sticker with that. But they do all include these nice plastic containers, so you can leave them in there and display them with their backgrounds. Since these earlier ones all came with the Artist Proof sticker, I have chosen to leave the plastic covering on them, which does mean that they're going to be more reflective, but I will remove a different one out of the box so you can kind of see a pin close up in, in detail. Now after those ones came out, we also ended up getting some really beautiful ones of Sailor Moon. All of these are also from Figpin, so they include the Artist Proof Figpin sticker as well. In this case, we have three different versions of Sailor Moon, and these numbers are 923, 924, and 925. The first one that we have here is Sailor Moon doing the same pose as the original Figpin that came out, but in this case, she is a glitter variant, and she also comes with a different background. You'll notice that all of these are in black nickel, and this one was different because she was actually a convention exclusive with an LE of 1500. 924 is a non-glitter variant and this one has a different pose. So now we have two poses of Sailor Moon. Along with that announcement we also got number 925 which is also Sailor Moon in the same pose as 924 but this version is a glitter variant. Now you'll notice with both of these glitter variants that they are one of 1500 and both of them were convention exclusives. 925 was a New York Comic-Con exclusive and 923 was an Emerald City Comic-Con exclusive. Now I need to have a discussion about all these convention exclusive fig pins. I hate I hate having convention exclusive items. It really bothers me because it promotes scalping behavior. People will go up to these booths, they know that these things are convention exclusives, they will purchase these for the retail price and then resell them on Mercari or eBay for 60, 70, sometimes $100. And for collectors like me, that means your only access to these items if you can't go to a different state and pay for a flight to get there is to buy them off Mercari. It ends up making collecting very expensive and I would much rather if they just released these online so anybody could have access to them. Now I realize as a business, having a booth at these conventions is very expensive. In fact, I've run many a booth for cybersecurity conventions for a different company that I used to work with. I know that booths are expensive and I know that you have to give them deals in order to get people to go to your booth, especially if they've never heard of your brand or if they just buy everything that you offer online. So you have to give people some kind of incentive to go to your booth. But when convention exclusives are only available at the convention, it really turns me off from wanting to purchase all these items online. I would much prefer if Figpin did 
retail and retail website exclusives. For example, if they sold one only at Target and Target.com, because then if I don't have a Target near me, I could still go to Target.com and be able to get this exclusive item from that specific retailer. Now, luckily we do have some of those, but they continue to offer these event exclusives, which require you to be at the event. So now that I have gotten that off my chest, let's move on to the rest of the glitter variants that I have picked up as well as the remaining ones that have been announced since then. For the rest of the Inner Sailor Guardians, we get these glitter exclusive pins that also include these really pretty backgrounds behind them. Each of these ones is also numbered and they also have some specific LE. Sailor Jupiter is number 1360 and she was an LE of 500. Sailor Mercury is 1358. I don't have the LE sticker on her but she was probably LE 500 as well. Sailor Mars is 1359 and she was an Alliance Fest event exclusive. And Sailor Venus is 1361 and she was an LA Comic Con exclusive in 2023. We also have these two fig pins of Sailor Moon. One is a glitter variant and one is not, but both are black nickel. This Sailor Moon is number 1301 and this Sailor Moon is 1422, which was a Crunchyroll retail exclusive. Both of these feature different backgrounds. I definitely prefer the glitter variant with the gradient background. I think that one is so pretty. Now you probably saw this one in the background and this has got to be one of the nicest collectible boxes that I have gotten in my collection, just in general, comparing to all the other collectibles that I have in here. This is a fig pin exclusive collectible box, which features all of the inner guardians again. With this box, we also received separate plastic packaging. So if you wanted to take them out of the box, you could do that and then stick them in their own specific boxes. So the numbers for these ones are Jupiter, who is 849, Venus is 850, oops, Sailor Mars is 848, Sailor Moon is 846, and Sailor Mercury is 847. This collectible box is gorgeous. It includes this beautiful sleeve that you can leave on the box, which features an image of all the Sailor Guardians. The inner box features the English logo right here. In the box is this lovely protective cover, and this does have all the planetary symbols on the back of it. And then we have our fig pins. Now I'm going to leave these in the box, but you will probably notice a slight difference in terms of the metal used for these collectible fig pins in this collector's box. These are actually gold, which is a slight difference from the black nickel that we have received for all the single pins. Now from a pin collector perspective, I prefer gold. Gold does not tarnish as quickly as black nickel and it will last a lot longer than any of the other metals that are used for pins. So if a company is using gold, I know that that is going to be a nice high quality pin, especially if the pin itself looks really good. If they use some shadowing details like they did with these fig pins, and if they use pretty thin lines for the metal work, which they did in these as well, then I know it's gonna be a nice pin. I think each of these are really stunning and I've debated whether or not I wanna take them out of the box and display each of these on their specific stands, or if I just wanna keep them in the box and display the box closed or open. I don't know, what do you think? I would love to know. So moving on from all of the inner Sailor Guardian pins, we also got a couple of tuxedo masks. I know! These two tuxedo mask pins are 1302 and 1423. Here we have tuxedo mask. Both of these pins feature him with the same pose. One is a non-glitter variant, that's the more common version, and then we have the glitter variant, which is the less common version, which was also an event exclusive. This glitter variant also has a pretty similar background to the ones that you saw in the glitter variants for the Inner Sailor Guardians. This was a New York Comic Con event exclusive, and he was one of 1,000. These two pins were quite a surprise, but we got Usagi Skino, number 1303 and 1424. Again, these are two different variants. We have a non-glitter and the more rare glitter variant version. The nice thing about these two is they were available online via a fig pin partner retail website, like a licensed reseller of fig pin items. This retailer is Plastic Empire, and I believe they still do have some of these in stock. However, I can't guarantee it at the time of recording. Both of these again are black nickel, and I really 
really love the glitter variant. She's so cute. I was very glad that these were a retail exclusive because that meant I didn't have to go to an event. I could actually just stay here in my collection room and order those online. These Luna and Artemis pins were also a bit of a surprise and they are absolutely adorable. We have Artemis who is 1305 and we have Luna who is 1304. I believe that these were commons so you can still find them pretty easily. I love the packaging for this box lunch exclusive pack of two glitter variants. These are of course Luna and Artemis. We have numbers 1425 and 1426 and these are another retail exclusive specifically from box lunch. These were really cute and they were sold in stores as well as online and they do feature glitter versions of both of the kitties. And lastly in my fig pig collection are the two Claire's exclusive fig pins. Now I am a Claire's child. I did grow up with a Claire's in a mall, so I'm very familiar with Claire's and this is the first time I have walked into a Claire's or like went to their website. I didn't even know Claire's had a website until these came out as a retail exclusive. So when I went to that site, whoo, the memories were flooding back of going into Claire's and purchasing all these really inexpensive like earrings and things of that nature. So these are retail exclusives of Luna and Sailor Moon. It looks like both of them are silver instead of gold or black nickel. And the numbers for these fig pin minis are M87 for Luna and M86 for Sailor Moon. I decided to keep them in the box because the boxes have this really nice display and they look really good in a collection. So they are staying in the box. So now that I have shown you my entire collection of fig pin enamel pins, both the retail exclusive, the event exclusive, as well as the commons, let's go ahead and check out the fig pin app so we can find out how it works with these enamel pins. So whenever you purchase a fig pin, you can unlock its serial number in the app. What does that do? Well, let's find out. Now, in order to unlock your pin in the fig pin app, you have to open it, so be really, really gentle with opening it. Make sure you don't bend the sides of your little card, the background in the back. You can remove that, and your pin can actually be removed from the display like so. You take off this backing piece and then remove your pin like that. There you go. This is where you will find your serial number. It's on the back of the pin right here, so you can't see it until you actually open the pin itself. Mine is covered up with a little strip of paper. So what I'm gonna do is open the Fig Pin app. I'm already logged into my account, which if you don't have an account, just go to the home screen and you can set up an account here. Go to unlock a Fig Pin. I typed in the wrong number, so it says there was a problem, please try again. So I'm gonna type in the Fig Pin serial number here, and if no Nobody else has claimed this specific pin, then it should still be unlockable. If you have purchased one second party, then you might find that it is already unlocked based on their own account. So if you do care about unlocking your fig pins, then you may want to ensure that the fig pin serial number has not been unlocked before you purchase one from a third party. Click unlock and this is going to calculate its score. Okay, there we have it. So we have Sailor Moon number 925. That's the correct model. Factory score is 92. The story score is currently a zero. Edition AP, edition lot A. We also have the volume one of 50 minus 18. Sequence 30 of 50 minus 54. And then claim minus the first claim. That's pretty cool. So I can actually do this with each and every one of the fig pins that I own. Okay, so what is the explainer of these fig pin scores? So fig pin scoring and fig pin power are the two numbers that they're rating all of these different pins with. All of them come with a factory score that's determined by the edition number, the volume, and the sequence. The story score tells the history of that fig pin after it's been claimed by a collector. Then you have the claim score, which is the story score facet of every single fig pin. If you multiply a fig pin's factory score with its story score, you'll get its fig pin power. You also end up gaining collection power and collection scores based on the amount of fig pin powers that you get, which you gain more and more as you unlock more fig pins. So if I look at my collection, since that's the only fig pin I I've unlocked. I only have a few scores in here. Now, since I mainly collected these fig pins for display, I'm not necessarily going to go through all of them and unlock them one by one. I really just want to keep them on display and keep them in the boxes. But if you are a fig pin collector, then that part will be extremely important. 
So that is my fig pin collection. These are all of the ones that have been released so far, but fig pin has teased us with future releases. So I am curious if you also collect fig pins. I have seen a lot of the ones that they have come out with and they're super cute. I love, I love the glitter variant fig pins. I do wish they were more common, more easily accessible to obtain for my own collection. I do think that my heart will always be with the fantasy pins because they're beautiful. They're so big and heavy and gorgeous and they're made from original art. So I just love collecting those pins. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you next time. Johnny.